All right. So today we've got Charlie Benante right. from Anthrax on the show. Um, Anthrax is going to be featured at a number of festivals coming up this fall, um, including Louder Than Life and several others. Um, Louder Than Life's where I'm certainly hoping uh, as long as things continue to look good, um, maybe I'll be able to cover the band up there too. So um, we brought Charlie on here and I'd like to welcome him. Uh, and we're going to chat about a whole bunch of things Anthrax related as well as what he's been up to for the last year. So welcome, Charlie. Hey, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So, so talk to us, man. Uh, you know, you guys have a bunch of shows coming up. You've got your first festival coming up, uh, Rock Fest, right? I think that's coming up July 16th. So a little over three weeks away. Um, how's it feel to be getting ready to get back out on the big stage again? Uh, it's like, um, I'm really nervous and I'm really excited. So you put those two together. I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, I'm excited to get on stage again, but I'm very nervous to get on stage because I'm a little rusty. We're a little rusty. You know, we're going to be rehearsing a lot. But at the end of the day, most times with, with me, as soon as I hear the, the roar from the crowd, all that stuff just kind of goes away. And then, bam. Awesome. I awesome. start focusing and then that's it. <laughs> and how long has it been since you guys last played? I got to imagine this is probably one of the, the, the longest breaks you've had in your career. Last time we played a show, a full anthrax show was November of 19. All right. All right. So oh, almost two years, definitely over a year and a half then. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the last one. I mean, we played, uh, we jammed a little bit, not all of us, but we did a, a dime bash thing, uh, January of 20. Yep. Uh, that was really the last time that we all played together with other people too. So, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a while and I'm sure every other band, um, are feeling a little bit of the, the nerves too, you know what I mean? The excitement. Um, so, you know, for me, the most important thing is like everybody is present. <laughs> everybody is, um, healthy everybody is just excited so i just want it to go right i don't want there to be any problems so that any any other shows that follow may come down if you know what i mean that's right that's right yeah open it up and, and keep it open right yeah don't be stupid <laughs> let's 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 all be positive and just kind of keep the momentum going yeah that's right that's right Awesome. Well, hey, really looking forward to that. Um, I got to imagine almost as much as you are, too. Um, but that said, you know, it's been a little while since you guys have played a show, but you've kept yourself pretty busy. Um, and, and I, you're, have, I have. Yeah. You're not new to that. You're, uh, you're a pretty prolific guy that's always got your hands in a number of different things. But one thing that's come out of this um, that resulted in your new album, Silver Linings, that just came out last month, uh, May 14th. Mm -hmm. Um, talk a little bit about that, right? Uh, what, what started that whole thing where you were collaborating? Just you know, give us a little insight as far as what went into all that. So, I mean, it was never intended to be put, you know, put on vinyl, put on record or anything. It was just something that I started doing to get out of that funk that I was in. I was kind of getting really depressed about what was happening in the world. And of course, what was happening here in our country and um, I was glued to the TV. I was glued to the phone, watching this 24 seven. And it really started to have a bad effect on me. And uh, my girlfriend, Carla, told me, you gotta stop this. You gotta shut this stuff off and you need to go and be creative again. Around that time, um, if you remember, uh, Neil Peart had passed away uh, you know, kind of recently from, from that yeah. time. And uh, I mean, I was just like, just really bummed out by a lot of things. So I started to just play again, like I once did when I would come home from school when I was younger, go to my room and just put on headphones and just play along to records and stuff like that. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was pay some kind of tribute to Neil and Rush. So I called up my friend Alex Skolnick from the band Testament, I called up my friend Ra, who plays with Suicidal Tendencies, and I asked them if they would want to 
get involved and be a part of this song, you know, this Rush song. And they were all like, yeah, because I knew they were going through the same thing I was going through, you know? So that's how it started, basically. We really had so much fun doing it. And the response from people was so gr- was so great. It was so positive that it kind of started to snowball. And then we would, you know, talk and we'd be like, what can we do next, you know? And that's how it happened. So it was all because of that. The My kind of depressive state, my love for, for Neil and the need to play again and entertain. And it just snowballed into something else, you know? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you know, spinning through that a little bit, um, there's some real gems on there, man. And, and uh, you, know, I don't, you know, I don't know what goes into figuring out, you know, what are we going to kick off with and stuff like that. Um, but starting that off, uh, City of Blinding Light, like it, it, it's neat. And you, you know what already, I kinda, you know, you already knew where the, where the album came from in the origin somewhat. To hear you explain, it gives it a lot more depth and that's really cool. Um, but there's a lot of neat stuff going on there, right? Well, Mother Love Bone. I mean, you're all over the board with some of that music yeah. and it was cool. Um, it's not just one style it's no. all different styles and i always say it's like when you're younger and you're driving in the car with your parents or whoever and they're playing like a top 40 radio station or whatever it may be and you're just absorbing all this stuff it's not particularly your type of music but you're so young that you listen to whatever your parents are listening to and sometimes those songs just stay with you. And then later on in life, you start to revisit them and it brings you back to a time of, like I said, you're in the back seat, and it's just a memory. So some of these songs were memories from something that happened when I heard them the first time or from my childhood. I often talk about where I lived in the Bronx. Um, all of our houses were, were close together and we knew everybody. So if you go in our uh, if you go in the backyard, your backyard is adjacent to the neighbor across the way, and there they were always playing music, swimming in the pools, and we would jump from one pool to the next person's pool, and it was just stuff like that. And I guess that's how this record came about because it was songs that I loved and still do love. Yeah. Oh, it's really cool. And, and, um, and you're right. It's, it's all over the board, right? I mean, you got some Fleetwood Mac on there. Um, I, I love the Transylvania cover was kind of out of the blue too. That was really neat. Uh, maiden track, right? Um, that's the only metal song that's on it. Yeah. Right. Um, a little double dip with, uh, with some kiss on there too. Um, kind of was, was glad to see a little bit of that, but yeah, it was really fun. Um, I think it was neat. And, and did you find that to be cathartic? Did you find that to really, kind of you know help through a lot of that then a hundred percent because what it did was uh i would spend a week or two on music and then i'd spend another week or so doing artwork um and the time that i you know i was consumed by this so it took me away from from all the other stuff of course i was still concerned about what was going on but I had something else Mm -hmm. that I was focused on, you know? So uh, making music to me has always been, is is my passion. And if I could spend, you know, hours in the studio, I just get lost and uh, creating is, is is an important thing. And sometimes I would, uh, I, I often said this, like when I'm writing music uh, for Anthrax, sometimes I become possessed by the guitar uh, and I don't even remember playing it. And then I'll listen back to what I recorded and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of cool stuff here, you know, but I kind of almost meditate into another, another, there's another place that it takes me to. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad it happened that way. And, 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 uh, last piece on the album is at, at what point during that project, as you were going through that, like when, when did you realize that, you know what, this was not just, you know, therapy right uh this is this is actually something cool this is something that that people are going to want to see and, and that i'm going to be able to package up and, and really keep uh well like so the first uh, few that i did were the, the were the rush songs and 
uh, they don't appear on the on the Silver Linings record because I wanted to keep them separate for their own kind of EP that mm-hmm. we're going to do for Record Store Day. Um, but uh, it started to become eclectic and just kind of cool right around the time the Run DMC song, I think, was done and uh, D got involved and... Our old, uh, old guitar player, Rob, who used to be an Anthrax, who is now a Volbeat, he got involved. That whole piece to me was really exciting. And the way, the arrangement that I had in my head, I wanted to do it as if I was a DJ. Um, so what you hear and see in that song, there's no overdubs, like it's live. So I'm triggering all the sound effects and those parts would trigger the next section so that to me was the most exciting thing because it was done right then and there um so that to me is is when it kind of took a different it it took a bigger leap you know awesome awesome well that's really cool and and i'm glad that that it was something that that you felt that you could share because it's it's really cool um covers can be a really fun thing it can be a tricky thing too um but i think you did a great job on it and um you know, I've enjoyed listening to it, and, and it was really nice hearing you talk about that. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, you, you, you talked a little bit about your art. Um, I'd, I'd like to get into that a little bit, too. Um, that's that's a huge piece of you that, honestly, I wasn't terribly familiar with before, um, you know, before doing a little bit of, of prep here and finding out. I've seen different things that that, uh, that you've done, but, um, you know, that, that seems to be a pretty big part of, uh, of you as well. Um, you know, give us a little insight as far as that's concerned. So when I was uh, when I was younger, I would draw constantly, and I would draw superheroes. I would draw monsters. I draw the Beatles. I draw, uh, you know, anything that I thought was interesting. I wanted to try and do my own version of it. So um, when I was out of school, I went to this. I was in this art school for a, a very short period of time. And then the band started to do things and I had to go on tour for the first time. So I left art school. I left art school with the feeling of, and I remember telling my mom that, you know, it was either going to be one or the other that was going to happen. But I thought that if I can get the band to get to a certain level, then I could use what, you know, my, you know, my art, with the band and that's what i did so um i'll I'll never forget going up to the uh the record label for the first time and sitting around with their art department and just learning from them getting a real education about what colors work with what album covers well uh, design stuff like that so um when i went up to uh we were on island records our first record our first major release was uh, Spreading the Disease, and that was done uh, Island Records. So Island is through Warner. Mm-hmm. So I got to use the Warner Brothers art departments and stuff. And I learned so much throughout those years about, you know, art and stuff like that. You know, back in the day, I don't know if people will, un- will understand this. Well, some do, of course. But when you would go to a record store or you CD, whatever, and you walk down the aisle, and there's the bins and certain colors catch your eye. Um, so it was those type of things that I was learning about. And, you know, your logo needs to be big on a record. You know, when you're a new band, you, you want people to recognize your logo. So that's why for us, it's always been anthrax across here, you know, big. Uh, because now people use the, the word brand. And of course, we're a brand. Like when you become uh, in this business, when 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 you've had you know a string of successes and you become you know legendary, well, that becomes a brand. So um, uh, I've been talking so much that I even forgot the question that you asked. (laughs) (laughs) No, we're you're just just getting into the art and stuff. you know, where that fits at and what that is to you, you know, that, 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 that that's such a big part of you. So actually I, I appreciate you sharing that. Oh, here we go. So I did a, Carl and I did a art show here in Chicago back in March and it was all the art that I created throughout the year. 
so um this is just a little postcard of like one of the pieces and that's oh. that's from my uh, well, fantasia from, huh love fantasia love that movie and then this was this piece was this is neil that i did oh. um and these are these are huge paintings these are just a little uh you know a tiny little digital printout of it and then of course my oh Eddie. man i've um, seen that one so that's what i did throughout the year i either did music or i did art and um and before you know it i had a huge collection <laughs> so we're going to do another art show uh in august in new york uh i mean we haven't announced it yet but we're planning that that's cool i, I gotta ask you charlie are, are are any of those available as prints at all yeah i'm gonna make prints of those because they were only available as the actual piece yeah you know the acrylic acrylic on canvas but I think I'm going to make some prints of those because I love them. It's just so vibrant, and, uh, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to do that. Nice. I can tell you hands down that Fantasia one, I'm, I'm buying one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really cool. We're a huge Disney family. So, you know, there's a place for that. Dude, I love that movie. You know, looking forward to things getting back to normal. Speaking of that, I can't wait till, uh, till they bring back all of that stuff down in, uh, in, in Disney, you know, the fireworks and, and all the shows and stuff like that. It's so cool to see things coming back. Yeah, you know? I know. Um, but that's really cool. I appreciate you uh, you sharing that. And then um, the other thing was the uh, to kind of segue a little bit. Um, I know you did uh, an alternate cover um, for the uh, Among the Living graphic novel that uh, that just came yes. out, right? Yeah, um, you did the Judge Dread cover of that. Um, it looks like that's that version is still available through Z Two Comics. Um, tell us uh, about the project, so, yeah. though. So basically. Um, I've been wanting to do a comic book for years now. And every time I start to like focus on it, I get sidetracked with something else and I put it away. So uh, early on in uh, during the pandemic, uh, Josh Bernstein from Z2 contacted us and would you guys want to do a comic or a graphic novel? And I was like, absolutely. But what's, what's the storyline? What, what are we talking about? You know? And then it was his idea to do the album uh, and each song was a story, but the stories weren't necessarily the lyrics from the album. They were just the title and a new story. Um, I like that. I was really intrigued by that. And, you know, when Scott and I were talking about it, we wanted to get certain people, uh, you know, attach them to certain stories and, and whatever. And, Bam, it started to come together. Rob Zombie signed on, Corey Taylor signed on, uh, Gerard and Mikey Way, Brian Posehn, all these people signed on to do stories. And it was like, wow, this is going to be really cool. Then we got some really cool artists to sign on to to do it. And it started to take shape. And every day uh, was something else that was happening with it. And it was just getting so exciting. And um so then Scott and I worked on the I Am The Law. Uh, he wrote the story and I did the, um, the art for it, the cover. And my cover is basically a piece of the story. So you got to read the story to understand what the, what the cover is. So, yep. But I was so, man, I was so excited about it. Um, and it was the first time that I did a comic book cover and... It's like, wow, this is, it's been such a bad year, but it's also been such a good year too, you know? And that's actually how the title came about, Silver Linings, because I was, I was talking to people and they were just so bummed out about everything. And I'm like, look, there's, there are silver linings in this, you know? Um, as bleak as it looks and God, so many people are dying, you know, but I tried to find silver linings in it all. And that's, that's how the title came about. Yeah. Well, it, very, very fitting. Absolutely. Um, and, and, uh, really cool stuff. And, and I, and I totally agree, you know, we've had a lot of opportunity in the last year to, um, figure out new ways to, to, you know, dive into who we are. Um, and it's cool that you've had so many different outlets to do that. Um, yeah. but, um, you know, here we are too, right? 40th anniversary of anthrax. Um, that sounds wild, doesn't it? 
<laughs> I, I I can't even comprehend it. I I, um, I just don't think of it as that, you know. Um, well, first of all, I mean, yeah, it's it's almost forty years. Uh, but you know, we were very young when this whole thing started. You know, we were just kids going out on tour and kind of just learning about everything as we go, and uh, because. Nobody showed us how to do it. You know, nobody educated us on how or, or what you can achieve. We were just kind of going for it. The only thing, the only education we had was modeling ourselves after our favorite bands. That's how they did it. Let's try and do it that way. You know, like Iron Maiden come to mind all the time when I talk about that. Uh, the way those guys did it. Uh, they just did it the right way, man. And is I, I always admired them for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they're still going strong too, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Bigger than ever. You know, bigger than ever. We're we're still in this this phase, Charlie, where we've got these legendary bands, um, you, you guys included. And it's like, what's going to come next? And it's funny because these these other bands sort of come out. And, and they, 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 they sort of carve their path and, and you don't even realize it. And then all of a sudden they're, they're sort of part of that cloth too, you know? Um, but we're still able to hang on to so many of these, these legendary bands that, that, that came before you guys too, right? I'm hoping to see Kiss oh, yeah. again this summer. I don't know when that's going to run out, but, you know, we're still, uh, still chugging along. So we'll see. But oh, 40 yeah. years is something to be proud of, you know? Oh, absolutely. And I, I often think about when I was in my 20s or even in my teens, and you'd always hear about the Rolling Stones. Yeah. People would always kind of bag on the Stones because, oh, they're still doing it, you know. And Keith Richards, at one point, kind of responded to all that shit. And his answer was perfect. He said, would you ask that question to a B.B. King? Uh, would you ask that question to like a, a jazz cat who's doing it till death? You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's like, well, why would you ask us that same question? If, if we're able to do it, then we're going to do it. And I was like, fuck yeah, that's, that's the, that's the best answer because the stones, I think, look, they can't go on forever because you know, life just doesn't work that way. <sighs> But man, man, they've given it so much. They've given, they've given us so much of themselves, you know, and that's how I think sometimes too about bands. Uh, we, you know, and this is going to come off like people like, oh, oh yeah, really? You know, like we've sacrificed a lot for doing what we do. Mm -hmm. We've missed so many things because we were away and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, man, it's a it's a give and take thing, you know. So we enjoy doing this, but like the Stones, like I said, they've given us so much, you know, and a lot of bands have given us so much. So uh, don't, you know, I, I'm always grateful. I'm always appreciative of, of of that whole thing. Yeah, well, it's it's awesome. And and looking back, I mean, when you, when you've got you know a, a catalog that deep, you've got stories that run that far back there's so much to there's so much to tell you know it's wild and, and seeing a lot of those sort of like the testimonials as, as part of the the kind of the celebration that you guys have have had going on um you release different clips and stuff like that um obviously you know tons of people in the rock world um absolutely loving on anthrax um and it's really cool you know one of the things that comes up uh, a few times is you know is the word underrated which is definitely something i've always felt but at the same time you're a band that I, I, I go, I, I was at the big four in New York city, Yankee stadium, anthrax day. And that place was yours. Right. And it just, it just feels like you guys came back at that point for like a whole nother go around. And now it's been 10 years again uh, since, since then, which is crazy. Um, but yeah. it feels like bigger than ever, to be honest, at least, at least for me, from, from the guy buying the album, um, you know, when um, fight them till you can't came out, I was like, Oh my God. You know, and, it, and it's just been trucking again and again. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I, I know. It was like we were given a, a second chapter, you know, in, in this whole thing. Um, because we never stopped. Uh, we just kept going, always, always thinking that, you know, the cycle, it's going to come around again. 
Um, and I remember the first time working on worship music and when Joey sang the first song on it and my, the hair in my arm stood up and I'm like, there it is. That's the sound right there, you know, that, that we haven't had in a while. And it totally had this big effect on me and everybody else too, you know, and it's like, that's it. This is, this is how we're going to ride it out to the end. Yep. You know, just like this and just keep making the best possible records and the best shows that we possibly can until we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's it. And, and, uh, and it's been a ton of fun. Um, and certainly looking forward is, is exciting as well. Right. Yeah. Celebrating 40 years. There's certainly a lot of looking in the rear of your mirror. Um, but there's no reason to stop. Right. You know, Keith and Mick no. are still doing it. So, <laughs> that's right? right. I mean, that's, that's where we're going with it all, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. Um, that's really cool. Do we have anything, um, anything in store for, uh, for these festival shows to, to look forward to? I will well, look forward to, of course, seeing, seeing Anthrax playing live. <laughs> um, we are, you know, we're gearing up to uh, play harder than ever, you know, like faster and just, we want, we want the audience to just come with us on this and just, you know, because if the audience is given a hundred percent, we're going to give 200%. And that's the way it works with us, man. We love that connection. Um, so man, don't be sleeping out there. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta be in the moment and put your phone down and just live in the moment for a minute. You know? Yeah. You or know, 60. It's <laughs> and it's funny, Charlie, it's, it's going to, you know, at some point it's almost going to be the, the, the discussion is almost going to get played out, but I don't think that's going to be for a few months because right now everybody, there's so much pent up energy for that live experience on both sides of the stage, right? You guys are so excited to get out and play. And I mean, fans are just dying to get out and see a show. And I, I, I can only speak for me. But at this point, yeah, I, I'm ready to be in a crowd. I don't care how close anybody; it doesn't matter. I'm I'm ready, and, it, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see you guys again. Awesome, you know, um, that's going to be really really cool. Um, but you guys, I can't wait these... to see a lot of my uh, a lot of my friends. Actually, I can't wait to see my friends from other bands, like physically, to like, hey, dude, you know, because we. We, we text and we would ever talk. And it's like, when I see them, it's going to be very emotional, you know? And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to just seeing the look on everybody's faces and the crowd, you know, it's like, here we are, you know, let's enjoy each other. Yeah. Well, and that's, a, that's exactly what I was going to ask you is like, nobody's seen anybody, but with, with, you know, limitations, of course, but like, yeah, like, you got to be excited to get out there and see some people, right? I mean, who, who have you not seen in, in ages that, that, you know, you're, you're just, you're just dying to, you're texting with, you know, I can't wait. Oh, the first show, I believe that we were playing in Wisconsin, a uh, bunch of, bunch of bands that are, that are my friends, like uh, Chris Jericho's band, uh, Anselmo. I don't know if Anselmo's on our day, but uh, um, like the list, Rob Zombie, all those guys, um, so I'm so excited to see all of these guys that I haven't seen in a while and just, you know, Hey man, I missed you. <laughs> yeah. You know? Absolutely. So looking forward to that and just fucking playing loud. <laughs> <laughs> long overdue, long overdue, but trust me, we're, we're all ready for it too, man. We're really ready for it too. So, um, um, Charlie, there's, there's a story that I've, I've heard, I've mostly read over the years. Um, and honestly, I'd, I'd love to hear some truth to this. And this, this is about, uh, you guys as anthrax kind of saving the day, as far as I know, uh, after Metallica had their gear stolen back in the day around the time of, uh, ride the lightning. What, 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 tell me what, tell me what really happened there. I, I remember, um, uh, their gear got stolen, I believe, in Boston, and they were doing this tour to pay to get to to Europe to start recording "Ride the Lightning," I believe. And uh, we lent them all our gear to play a show or two, I believe. And um, and 
that was it. And I think on one of the singles or something, you could see it's our gear. Or I forget what, there's a picture of it. And, you know, back then they would rehearse in the same place we did, you know, uh, and we were good friends. So it was like, of course, you know, of course we'll give you whatever you need to, you know, to do what you got to do to get there and record. Yeah, man. So that's a true story. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I just I don't feel like I've I've heard it told before. Um, and it's kind of neat, you know, the the camaraderie. Um, and and when you look back on on sort of what becomes of all of that, here you are, you know, all these years later, you know, this this group of bands is still tight, still out there banging, doing it. Um, that's really cool. That's a really cool thing. Yeah. So you know, that was kind of neat. It was to one for all, all you know, that type of thing. And. Uh, yeah, man, it was those days, you know, we were all on a mission, you know, we were all out there to, to prove something. And um, I, I remember those days, you know, quite well, you know, they were awesome. Yep. Uh, 80s was a different time. <laughs> yep. You know, <laughs> tapes and trade tra tape trading and all that kind of stuff. Right. So Fun. that's how that's how it happens. Well, that's that's really yeah. cool, man. I, I appreciate you sharing that um and uh definitely hope we can do it again sometime um looking Absolutely. forward to seeing you guys so so much um honestly uh you know again the one that i'm hoping to cover is going to be louder than life four days chock full of bands you guys were one of the ones that absolutely stood out and said uh you're going to louisville this is where you need to be so i can't yeah, louisville <laughs> i know i've actually never been so it'll be fun for a number of reasons but um but yeah that, that lineup's insane um, I think it's going to be great. I, they are all going to be good and, and people are just really itching. I mean, these festivals are selling out like crazy right now. Um, no oh, surprise yeah, yeah, at yeah. all, you know, no nah. surprise at all. So, you know, really awesome. Um, thank you again for your time today. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll have this thing up soon for you, but um, thanks, thanks so much, bro. Charlie. I appreciate it, man. And go to my website, charliebenante.com to get the greatest coffee that you'll ever have. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And then let's talk soon. Yeah, you got it. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.